the uh, uh, PowerPoint, that would be uh, great. Um, it's been a real pleasure for uh, uh, Blackford and I, as we uh, plan this uh, um, get-together, we were saying it's, it's been in the planning stages for quite some time, and it's exciting that it's uh, actually uh, going to uh, be here. Um, a couple of uh, housekeeping things. Uh, this uh, agenda that, that is in your booklet uh, will be, um, we'll be trying to adhere to that very um, uh, strictly so that we can uh, make sure we make it uh, to all the different topics that we think are important. Um, also, by your seat, you will notice a very important single sheet of paper uh, that talks about the desiderata of uh, Macy's and Welch, which uh, I, I think is becoming sort of a, a perhaps will be engraved in stone somewhere someday. But uh, um, that is something that as we uh, have discussions, we'll probably refer uh, back to these different elements um, uh, frequently. So keep that handy so that uh, you can keep track uh, during the discussion. Um, <clears throat> the uh, uh, breakfast is over to the side. Uh, most of you have probably figured out that the restrooms are out and to the left. This is being webcast, and there, we know that there are a number of people that are going to be on the webcast today. So uh, in the discussion, it's going to be very important that uh, even if you have a voice as loud as mine, which none of you do, um, to use your microphones, um, uh, which are in front of you. And uh, there are two things related to the microphones. One is uh, when you uh, press it, uh, you'll notice a red bar will come on. Uh, when you're done making your comments, make sure that you turn it off again because in most cases, if there are too many on, uh, then it will uh, close out uh, anyone else. Uh, we're going to try and um, it can be sometimes difficult in a room of this size to uh, keep track of everyone that wants to ask a question. So just make sure you get somebody's attention, uh, either Blackford or myself or the moderators for each of the different sessions. Our moderators are all towards the end of the uh, inner U there where hopefully we can have pretty good sight lines. Um, I'm not going to uh, go uh, through the agenda uh, too much other than to say that uh, we will um, organize it around um, uh, five key questions. But first of all, here's the objectives for this meeting. Uh, convening key thought leaders, so if you're uh, uh, here, uh, congratulations on being promoted to a key thought leader. You can add that to your CV. Um, in genomic implementation and application of clinical decision support. And what we really want to do today is to compare our current assessment of the state of genomic clinical decision support with what we may envision as an ideal uh, state, and then trying to find gaps and strategies uh, to close those gaps. We want to identify and engage uh, U.S. and international health IT initiatives that could support uh, our recommended strategies and then uh, define a prioritized research agenda uh, for genomic clinical decision support. Um, and uh, uh, our key questions are going to be, um, is clinical decision support an essential element in the, in the successful implementation of genomic medicine? And I think to some degree that's a, uh, perhaps a rhetorical question for the group that's uh, convened around the table here. So we sort of answered, uh, that was asked and answered to some degree. Um, but um, you know, some of the questions that underlie that is genomic clinics clinical decision support, does it differ significantly from other types of decision support? And if so, what are the key differences? What is the ideal state and how can the impact be defined and measured? And so this uh, is going to be uh, in the purview of our uh, keynote speaker, uh, Dan Macy's, uh, who will get us off to a great start uh, in just a couple of minutes. Uh, we will then have three uh, sessions uh, that are going to be primarily uh, discussion around three different issues that we identified as being uh, fundamental. What are data issues that impact genomic CDS? How do we manage knowledge for genomic CDS? And what are the implementation issues surrounding genomic CDS? And you'll see in the agenda that each of those has a separate breakout discussion. Now, it's not to say that there's no relationship between these. Uh, but I think what we wanted to do is to focus um, so that we can uh, derive some um, information that would be of utility for what we're going to be doing tomorrow, which is to really spend our half day together to identify and prioritize a potential research agenda uh, for genomic clinical decision support. Um, 
So what I want to do uh, in the last little bit of the introduction here is to very quickly uh, go around uh, the room and uh, have everybody introduce themselves. Uh, so basically, this is name, rank, and serial number. So give your name and where you're from. Uh, and uh, for those of you, I think everybody knows me, but just in case, I'm Mark Williams. I'm uh, the director of the Genomic Medicine Institute at Geisinger Health System. And we'll do the outer you. Good morning, Blackford Middleton from Vanderbilt, and let me add my welcome to uh, Mark's. Thanks, everybody, for coming, and it uh, looks like it'll be an exciting day and a half. Uh, Kirk Wellhelmson, um, UNC and RENC. I'm director of bioinformatics at RENC. Luke Rasmussen, I'm a developer team lead and software architect from no Northwestern University. Rex Chisholm, Northwestern University. Dan Roden, Vanderbilt. Josh Denny, Vanderbilt. Paul Dexter, Regan Strafe. Lang Lee, uh, Union University. Jamie Skipper, ONC. That's the Office of the National Coordinator for Health IT. Uh, Nathan Hulse, Intermountain Healthcare. Siu Lam, Intermountain Healthcare. And Brian Schertz in Laboratory Medicine at the University of Washington. Uh, Brendan Keating, University of Pennsylvania. <clears throat> yeah. David Flannery from Rutgers College of Medical Genetics. And genomics. <laughs> <laughs> Jason Vassie, Brigham and Women's Hospital. Heidi Rehm, Partners Healthcare and Harvard Medical School. Sandy Aronson, Partners Healthcare. Chris Shute, Mayo Clinic. <clears throat> Betsy Humphreys, National Library of Medicine. Arjun Manrai, Harvard Medical School. Liz Worthy, Medical College of Wisconsin. Derek Scholes, NHGRI. Jean Jenkins, NHGRI. Jillian Bell, Moffitt Cancer Center. Chris Wetterstrand, NHGRI. Annie Niehaus, NHGRI. Jackie Ogis, NHGRI. Kristen Weitzel, University of Florida. James Hoffman, St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. Mark Hoffman, University of Missouri, Kansas City. Les Biesecker, Intramural Research Program, Genome Institute. Uh, Terry Manolio, Genome Institute. Uh, David Fenstermacher, Virginia Commonwealth University. Josh Peterson, Vanderbilt. Uh, Dan Macy's, University of Washington. Uh, Joe Mostel, NCBI. Bob Freemuth, Mayo Clinic. Casey Overby, University of Maryland. Hi, I'm Ken Kamoto. I'm Associate CMIO at University of Utah, uh, co-chair of the HL7 Clinical Distance Support Work Group. I'm uh, Brandon Welch from the Medical University of South Carolina. Suzanne Bellinson, Blue Cross Blue Shield Association. Alex Milosavic, Molecular Human Genetics, Baylor College of Medicine. Adam Berger, Institute of Medicine. Great, thank you all very much. I should have mentioned uh, at the outset that um, this meeting is uh, being um, uh, uh, sponsored by the NHGRI, and in particular, this is the seventh meeting um, that has been convened under uh, a group called the Genomic Medicine Working Group, of which we have several uh, steering committee members, Rex, uh, Dan, myself. Uh, we've convened a number of meetings on a diverse uh, set of topics um, uh, that we think are important uh, to move uh, genomic medicine uh, into the implementation uh, space. Uh, and um, this is the, uh, the latest of, of these uh, meetings. Um, uh, they've been, I think, extremely interesting, have brought together uh, a broad and diverse groups of stakeholders, and um, uh, there have been a lot of really um, uh, good th uh, things that have emerged from this, including uh, several um, uh, uh, RFAs specifically related to some topics that have been um, uh, developed. So, for example, uh, uh, the IGNITE program, which I know some of you are members of, was the direct result of one of these meetings. and. Uh, um, even though it wasn't specifically under the auspices of the Genomic Medicine Working Group, the ClinGen project, with many, which many of us are uh, a part of, also came out of uh, a large meeting of this sort. So I think this is something that 
uh, has a lot of potential to really uh, help those of us that are trying to uh, move this field forward, um, uh, develop some, uh, some traction. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to my co-moderator, uh, Blackford Middleton, who's going to uh, discuss the results of the survey uh, that almost all of you filled out. I think it's one of the highest response rates of a survey I've ever seen, so thank you for that. Thanks very much, Mark. Uh, 